Most men think their addictive cycle is very chaotic. They think it's unpredictable. They think it's craziness and they're right. There's a lot of things going on beneath the surface. And if you don't have someone being able to help you dissect every little thing that's going on, you're going to be missing out on a lot of information and data to improve your recovery process. But the truth is, your addictive cycle has a lot more routine and structure than you might think. And to prove it to you in this video, I'm going to be walking you through what happens when we go on relapse and give you a bunch of questions and information that you can think about that's going to allow you to better understand what is leading you to go and act out, how to take action when you feel tempted, and how to stay clean and break the change and break the bondage and break free from your addictive cycle. Let's dive in, man. So today I created this addictive cycle flowchart to help you understand everything that's actually happening beneath the surface of your recovery. Just to help you get clarity on how this cycle happens, how interaction actually teach you all the structure and routine that actually happens that leads you to go and act out. I think for a lot of guys, they just don't know where to start or They've tried so many different things in the past. They try to fight it on their own with willpower. They maybe tried other methods to get some help. But at the end of the day, they just don't know what to focus on. They don't know what to, to do within their own recovery. And I think because of that, it gives a lot of people this sense of hopelessness. So if you're looking somewhere to start, I highly suggest by watching this entire video, because what I'm about to share with you is one of the biggest levers that we can pull inside of your recovery. Meaning just from watching this one video, you're gonna learn so much as to what's actually happening beneath the surface. You'll get clarity on that and it's gonna help you create a game plan. So this is gonna help you learn important and useful data. And by leveraging that data, you're gonna be able to create a personalized game plan that's effective every single time. You know, there's, there's no cookie cutter solution that's gonna work for you. You need something that is personalized. So by understanding what's actually going on, you're going to be able to have a effective game plan based off of uh, what's actually happening. So let's start with phase one. I think this is a good spot to start because this is something that I think a lot of people either have a very brief understanding of what this looks like or they don't even see it at all. I think one of the biggest things that people don't see or don't even are aren't even aware of the problem is why they are taking these self-destructive activities in the first place. You don't just wake up one day and you're like, all right, you know, today I'm going to go and, you know, do something that brings me a lot of shame and guilt and pain. You do that because there's a lot of pain or there's a lot of desires to go and escape from something in the first place. You don't willingly go and do something that's self-destructive. But I think a lot of people are blind to that and it's because they don't have clarity on about what I'm about to share with you. So they rely on willpower. It's like a good example is like a boxer who's blindfolded. Like he's going to be taking punches. Like he's going to be swinging, right? He has to, but he has no clue about where to lay the punch. He has no clue about where his opponent is. So he's trying a bunch of stuff. He's gassing himself out, but he, he's not doing anything effective, right? So what I'm about to share with you is like taking off the blindfold for the first time. You can see what you need to focus on. You can see your opponent. You can see the challenges that you're facing. And it all really starts with this right here, the escalation phase, which is in the days leading up to a relapse. And I want you to think about it through the lens of your most recent relapse. This entire video, think about what this looked like for you most recently. So with the escalation phase for your last relapse, was there any pain? Was there any pain agents or any desire for an escape? Were there any negative emotions or negative thoughts that were running through your head days before you actually went and took action? It probably is. Maybe a lot of stress from work. Maybe a lot of pressure. Maybe some relationship problems that were going on. There might be a lot of negative thoughts that are popping up that are, are leading you to feel bad about yourself. There could be a whole bunch of things. You know, I think you get what I'm talking about. There is definitely some of these things that are going on beneath the surface that have not been addressed properly. And it leads you to get to a point where there's so much pain. Like once this, your pain threshold is only so high, right? Eventually you get over that pain threshold and you're like, all right, gotta do something extreme to deal with this pain. I can't bear it anymore. So that's exactly what happens. So what did that look like for you? What, what pain or what desire to escape was going on? And how did you deal with it? Did you address it? Were you actively trying to find a solution? Because if you were, maybe the solution was bad. If you weren't addressing these things, that was your problem in the first place. Because the problem isn't that you're getting these urges. The problem is you have a desire to go and escape. There's a lot of pain or discomfort or 
stuff going on beneath the surface. That's the real problem. So eventually it gets to the point where you can no longer bear the pain. You got to do something about it. And it usually starts because your body, it kind of initiates that your body is like, I feel so much pain right now. You're not addressing this. You're not even acknowledging the pain that's going on. And then since you're not doing so, I'm going to take matters into my own hands and go and do something that I know is going to get me short term relief. Give me a little bit of pleasure. Make me feel good. And your body fully acknowledges that this is something that's going to hurt you in the long run, but it doesn't care because it's going to get relief from that short term pain that has not been addressed properly. So once that happens, you're going to move into the next phase, the initiation phase. This is where you start to get real temptations to go and act out. You get real urges. There's fantasies. There's intrusive thoughts. There's ideas that pop up and you start to deal with some of that stuff. I think a lot of guys, when they are relying on willpower, which is probably all of you watching this, a lot of these guys are entertaining the thought of whatever pops into their head. So let's say they get an urge to go and see an escort. They kind of think about it a little bit. It's like, hmm, that would seem nice. Think about it a little bit more, entertain the idea a little bit. They start to feel some pleasure. They're like, oh, whoa, like, yeah, this would be really nice to go and see an escort right now. And that starts to feed and feed and compound in this emotion to go and act out this emotion to go and seek and escape is increasing and it eventually gets to a point where the next step is to go and take action like you can't really entertain it anymore and that's where a lot of the internal conflict starts so there starts to be a little bit of resistance it's like okay wait hold on hold on hold on maybe i shouldn't be thinking about this right now i know that where this is going so you try to stop you're like okay don't think about this this is bad this is wrong i shouldn't go and do this Right? There's a lot of resistance and that sparks the start of a long drawn out war between your body and your mind. Your body wants to go and act out and feel better right now. And your mind is like, Hey man, logically, this is a terrible decision. It's going to be a waste of money. It's going to hurt you in the long run. Don't do it. There's a battle and there's self-talk on both sides. One side is giving you a bunch of rationalizations to go and act out. So like, yeah, one last time, you know, this won't hurt you. No one's going to find out. Or there's a bunch of other rationalizations that might pop up that are convincing you to go and take these actions. And on the other side of things, you're saying to yourself like, hey man, like this is bad. This is wrong. I just don't know. Don't do this. Or you're just trying to resist and fight against your own body from doing something you want to do. Like there's, there's two drivers to the same vehicle like one wants to steer one way the other wants to steer the other way in my own head i'm thinking about like that that one limousine where there's it's so long that there's a driver in the front and then there's a driver in the back right like if they're not on the same page man like a eh, big accident is going to happen and that's what's going on with a lot of guys where there's two different drivers and they're just fighting against each other trying to turn the car so that happens for a little bit right and, and it's a very long drawn out battle like i said before eventually you get to a point where the next step is like okay i can't really think about this anymore the next step is going to a website like the next step is to go and take action on the search and that's where a lot of the internal conflict intensifies and this is where the rituals start so this is an interesting process this is a weird little diagram here that's kind of circular and you'll see why I put this way in a second. Uh, because oftentimes what happens is the rituals start, like the necessary steps of the acting out process begin, right? So a ritual can be going onto a website, a ritual can be going and texting or calling the provider, it can be going and driving there, it can be getting cash. Like these are all necessary steps to go and fulfill your acting out desires. And because of that, there's still a lot of room for that internal conflict to occur. So let's say you go onto the website website like you, you go into the website you're looking around eventually you're going to get to a point where you can't entertain it anymore and you're like okay i have a decision to make it's either i continue to go and act out and i go in contact them or i don't and i don't do that and i get off the site a lot of people initially fight and say no they're like okay that, no I, I can't do that I, I i see where that's going let's just stop now and that internal conflict just intensifies so there's more rationalizations. There's more insane rationalizations that pop up and it's convincing you to go and act out. But there's also that same other side where you're trying to fight against yourself, right? And you're trying to convince yourself not to go and do this. So it happens and it happens and it happens and that it's a long drawn out fight. But eventually if you're relying on willpower, it's going to run out. This is a very exhausting process. And I know all of you know this far too well. 
and it gets to a point you're like all right whatever like i don't want to fight this anymore or eventually you give in to the rationalizations it kind of convinces you a little bit you believe it and you start to entertain that next step and then you continue to go to the next acting out ritual so this process can repeat many times over it can happen during the websites it can happen during the appointment setting process it can happen during to actually get into to the car to go and drive there like there's many different states where there's this decision and little feedback loop that happens but during this whole process what i also want you to know is this is where the trance really starts basically one of those drivers that i was talking about eventually wins like eventually the car is turning this way and, and you're not in control anymore you know you as the person you as an individual you know, I'll speak for myself, like me, Josh, when I was stuck in this addictive cycle, eventually Josh was no longer in control. He was not in control of himself anymore. And it was because my body and my flesh took control over me. It's like I'm the back seat, just watching it happen. I'm trying to like voice up and be like, hey man, like we, we should have turned over here. We shouldn't be going down this path. I know this is wrong, but your body's like, ah, whatever, we're going, you know? So I'm just like in for the ride, basically. And that is the trance and it helps the addict take the next steps. So this whole process continues all the way from going up onto the websites to actually going and driving there. And eventually you get to the point where you renounce control. And I think this is a, a big one for a lot of guys because this can happen pretty early on. Sometimes the lies and the rationalizations that you initially face can just kind of convince you to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah let's go and do this. But sometimes it's such a long and drawn out process that by the time you start to travel there or once you start to make the appointment, maybe like that's the moment where you're like, I can't fight this anymore. I'm, I'm this deep. Might as well get it out of my system so I can go back to feeling normal. And you just kind of relinquish control to make it easier for yourself. Because if you keep fighting, it's painful. If you're like, ah, oh, whatever it is what it is doing it, it, it's less painful to do that. Less of an internal conflict and eventually you go and act out, right? And I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Nothing too crazy. Uh, one thing that is interesting to point out is to see what makes you have a pleasurable experience versus what makes you have a bad experience. For some people, it's a pleasurable experience if there's a lot of intimacy or there's seemingly connection. It's never there, but it's it feels like it is. Or it can be the only way it's pleasurable is that is if you intensify the addiction. Like if you do a more intense thing, for example, instead of having one woman, you have two women or the sex act itself is more intense. Let's put it that way. If that intensifies, that's the only way to experience novelty. So it's enjoyable. And then also what makes a, a bad experience for you? You know, what does that look like? Is it is it a uh, ugly person? Is it a uh, someone who you don't feel the connection with? Is it doing the same thing that you've done a hundred times and you're just sitting there like, man, like wh what am I even doing here? Like there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of see, which is also important information to understand. And eventually you get to the acting out cope, right? You go and complete the acting out process. You feel the post nut clarity, you feel bad, and you have to deal with your decision. A lot of people do this differently. Some people distract themselves until they go to sleep on their phone. A lot of people eat. I know that's something that I did. I would eat some comfort food and make myself feel better. Some people drink, they smoke. There's many ways to honestly double down on the escapism to make themselves feel better in the moment. Because again, dealing with that pain is not fun. It's not an enjoyable thing to do. So oftentimes people double down on escapism, which only leads to more pain. And this is where this whole thing gets chaotic right here. Like, cause you initially you went and acted out because there's a pain. It could have been stress. It could have been relationship issues. It could have been literally anything. But now after you go and relapse, there's a lot of shame and guilt. There's a lot of low self-esteem. There's a lot of negative beliefs that are going on or negative thoughts. And it eats at you. It eats at your soul. It eats at your mind. It's unpleasant. And now there's even more incentive to go and find an escape. And your body knows for a little bit, it can get some pleasure. Just for a little bit. You know, it can feel the chase for a little bit when you're going through all the rituals. So it's going to try to double down on the same thing that it knows it's bad, right? So this is where people get caught up and trapped. And this is the addictive cycle. 
And I'm going to share with you some things that I want you to understand and some key takeaways from this, because just from talking through this, I'm sure you've realized there's a lot more structure and routine than you might think. There's always a pain agent or desire to escape. There's an internal conflict that you face when you're dealing with the urge initially and as it's going through the rituals. You know, there's self-talk, there's rationalizations, there's a bunch of things that are going on, right? And that's always the same. The rituals, right? Going to the website, calling them, setting an appointment, getting some cash, driving there. Like there's a ton of necessary steps in the process that you do probably every single time you go and act out. And there's probably consistent ways that you deal with the pain afterwards. There's a lot of stuff going on. So let's have some roadblocks. What are some things that we can do to take this information? And like I said over here, learn from it and help you create a personalized game plan. So there's three places where we can put up a roadblock and I'm gonna go from having been kind of towards the end of the acting out cycle towards the front, right? It's just a little bit easier for me to explain. So one place where we can put up a roadblock is right here, right? During the post act out cope. Another way that we can put up is around here, right? Leading up to the acting out process where all the rituals are. It's another place we'll put up a roadblock. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the best thing to focus on. Like if there's one thing that you focus on out of these three, it's definitely this, but they're all important. Uh, and it's these two things right here. We'll talk about that. So let's start from back here. Funny enough, it's going to sound weird. You're going to, you're going to question it a little bit. But funny enough, you can break out of this addictive cycle by learning how to process a relapse. I, honestly, it's, it's, it's paramount that you can learn how to process a relapse. Because what typically happens is escapism continues. There's a common cycle that you might be seeing right now that there's pain and then you escape. And then it brings more pain. And then you escape even more. And it's just a whole cycle. So when you have the pain of a relapse, you oftentimes see people doubling down on food or anything else to deal with that pain. And that's just the wrong way about it. So what you want to focus on is learning the skill of how to actually process relapse because it's data at the end of the day. Most people don't process the relapse. They just say, oh, whatever, forget about it. And it leads them to have that pain and nothing changes. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And the pains only continue. So if you give yourself a little bit of hope by processing the relapse, you can learn from something like this. And you're just going to go through the exact same thing that I did. You know, you're going to go through, okay, what pains did I experience? What was the internal conflict looking like when I was dealing with the urge? What were the rituals? How was I responding to that? What did that intrusive conflict look like? What are the lies and the rationalizations? What did that look like? How did I deal with this pain, right? Like going through exactly what we just did is going to give you a ton of useful information that you need to understand. Once you have the information, you're going to understand what to focus on next. So like, okay, when I feel stressed, when I have these rationalizations pop up, I'm going to say this instead. Instead of giving into the rationalization, I know that's not to be true. So when I say that to myself again, I'm going to shoot it down, right? And I'm going to say this to myself instead. So that is one thing that brings a lot of hope. You're actually dealing with the problem. That's a common theme that you're seeing right now. You have a pain, you have a problem, it goes unaddressed. It leads you to go and act out and escape. And it, it, that just continues and intensifies. So eventually we need to process this. If you weren't able to process it back here, which I'll show you how to do in a second, you definitely got to do it after the fact, right? It's not a fun process. It sucks. You're going to hate it. You're not going to want to do it. You probably maybe won't do it, right? But it's important to do. Next, the rituals. This is a, a very interesting one because it's a very long and drawn out process. So these two are very intertwined. Uh, the, the first and second place where we can add up a uh, roadblock. But specifically with the rituals, what I want you to keep in mind is that there are necessary steps to fulfill the acting out cycle. So if you can identify what that is for you, now you're going to be able to add resistance to that. There's maybe ways you can add accountability around that or add layers of protection to resistance to stop yourself from taking those actions. Another thing that you have to do is establish clear cut boundaries. Recovery is not black and white. Recovery is, is like this. It's like you're either acting out or you're not, right? But what happens with these rituals is you're like, eh, this is kind of the gray area, right? It's like, okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't go to the bank and withdraw cash, but I haven't done anything yet. 
you know, those rationalizations pop up. I haven't, I haven't done anything. And all of that can be avoided from understanding what is acting out and what is not acting out. And once you establish that and are saying, okay, this is bad. I can't do this anymore. There's automatically going to be more resistance. So that's a helpful little tip. That's a short-term little tip that I can give you. But the real solution is all over here because the, these two are still very intertwined, which is dealing with the pain of why you want to go and escape, identifying it and creating solutions to it proactively before you get a desire to go and act out. That's a big part of it. That's a huge part of staying clean and having that be a long term solution for you. Like that's a skill you have to learn, but also being able to deal with the urge itself. And both of these require self-talk. It requires self-talk to understand the pain that you're going through. And if you want more information on this, I made another video on how to use self-talk. It's titled How to Overcome Unwanted Sexual Desires. I'll link it up here in the card so you can be able to watch that after this video. And it'll teach you how to use self-talk effectively for these two things on how to deal with the urge and how to deal with the escapism and, and the pains and desires to escape. So when you start to use self-talk, you'll shoot down those rationalizations, you'll shoot down those lies, so it's not something convincing you to go and act out, and you replace that with positive and emotional self-talk that leads you to stay clean. And the, the key to all of this is now we've had a change of the problem. Most guys, dude, like, it, this is huge. Most guys think their problem is the urges. I get these urges, I don't know how to deal with it, and it leads me to go and act out. That's not the real problem. The real problem is why they get those urges in the first place, what pains and desires there are. So once you can identify what that is, the problem shifts from the urges to why I want to go and do this in the first place, which is an important mindset flip because you can identify your real problem. It's like taking the blindfold off, like I talked about earlier. Very, very useful. And this is where you want to put your most attention right here. This is king. And it's because it requires the least amount of willpower. After the rituals start, after you start to fall into the trance, it gets harder and harder and harder. So you want to put your attention here. And if you need help learning how to implement all of this, right? Like you say, okay, cool, good information. I acknowledge it. Makes sense. This is useful. But if you want help creating a personalized routine and game plan, I highly recommend going down below and booking a call with me. Because uh, on that consultation, I'm going to take a look at your situation. I'm going to see what's going on, see what you're struggling with see where you want to go and help you create a game plan piece by piece that is personalized to you because there's no cookie cutter solution out there that is key. So I'm going to share with you how to actually create that game plan and help you out through that process. Because at the end of the day, man, this is my purpose. I love doing this. This is why God put me on this earth. And I just want to give back for my audience and help them create solutions that they can use and get some help along the way. So with that said, guys, stay strong, stay safe. If you like this sort of video, give me a comment down below. I'll make more of these presentation style videos where I'm just giving a ton of value, just giving you what I know and trying to do it at a very distilled way. Uh, so if you like the video, let me know and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.